The information provided on this video does not, and is not intended to, constitute legal advice. Instead, all information, content, and materials available in this video are for general informational purposes only. You are responsible for being truthful on any forms or applications you may complete on USDA's website or elsewhere. To assist you and your practice, Fibro Animal Health welcomes you to this tutorial on how to successfully apply for a USDA AFIS Interstate Transport Permit. This document, also referred to as an import permit, is required to move diagnostic cultures within the domestic United States. Before we get started, let's review a few rules of the road. Number one, in order to receive biological organisms of animal origin from another laboratory or location, AFIS requires that a permit first be in place for your practice. Rule number two, this permit only allows your practice to receive these materials. You cannot ship them to any other location. Likewise, any other location would first have to have its own valid permit in place in order to receive materials at that site. Rule number three, by obtaining this domestic transport permit, you are personally assuming the responsibility for the receipt, the biocontainment practices, and the secure storage of the specific organisms as listed on the permit. This tutorial will orient you to the web-based request process and will help to ensure that the permit application is completed correctly, including the types of organisms requested and how they will be handled and stored. This online request process is accessed through the AFIS e-authentication website. To access the AFIS system, your identification needs to be confirmed. As a practitioner, you likely have established credentials for an account with USDA in order to authorize health papers, etc. If you have not established a USDA accreditation number with AFIS yet, then simply visit www.eauth.usda.gov and follow the steps to create account. Under Account Registration, it will ask what type of user are you? Select Customer, then click on Continue. Enter your email address. Once you have been approved, you may then access the Welcome to AFIS e-file website by logging into the website using your account credentials. After logging in, you will be ready to apply for the permit. From the drop-down, select VS16-3 Application for Permit to Import or Transport Animal Products and Organisms or Vectors. Click on Get Started, which takes you to VS Permitting Assistant. Here you must complete the Permitting Assistant to learn the admissibility requirements for your commodity or commodities. The Assistant lists the first steps to take before you proceed to the permit application. Step 1. Select Category tab to enter a commodity's detail. If correct, click on Organisms and Vectors, and then from the drop-down for Movement Type, Select Interstate Transport, the movement between U.S. states or territories. From the drop-down for category, select the appropriate response. For purposes of this example, we have selected livestock or poultry pathogens. Under the search bar for organism or vector, search for and select the appropriate response. For instance, if you are applying for a permit for U.S. origin livestock or poultry pathogens, Type in U.S. and then select Various U.S. Origin Livestock and Poultry Pathogens. From the drop-down for Exposed to Isolated from Animals forward slash Animal Products, make the appropriate selection and click Search. Step 2. Select Attributes dash for U.S. Origin Pathogens. If correct, check Yes and then Intended Use, check in vitro only. Step 3. Select your material. Click on Add Material, which is not applicable but a required step. Then click View Summary. Depending on the information that you have provided, a VS Permitting Assistant Summary page will then indicate that a VS 16-3 application is required. Click on Documentation Required. The type of blanket permit that we are applying for in this example only allows for interstate transport of U.S. origin livestock and poultry in vitro pathogens classified as biosafety level 1 
or BSL-1, and Biosafety Level 2, or BSL-2, that do not require a USDA VS laboratory inspection. The exceptions are low pathogenic avian influenza, Newcastle disease, and pseudorabies or Ajeski's disease, whose propagation requires a separate permit. After reviewing the summary page, click on Proceed to Login. Now, using your APHIS account credentials, access the APHIS website by logging into the e-authentication website. The VS16-3 you just started will be on the top. Click to go to draft. Now, you are directed to your account's own webpage where you find a draft of the application request for a transport permit. Review and confirm the information listed for the responsible party. Answer the question, will you be the permittee? If correct, select yes. If applicable, under Delivery Recipient, click on Select as Delivery Recipient as appropriate. At the bottom right, click on Save and Next. Confirm the exporter contact information by checking the appropriate selection. In this case, we have checked No, but they are various exporters within the United States. Next, click on Save and Next. For the material page, if correct, check the drop-down for intended use as in vitro studies. If applicable, check the drop-down for intended use subcategory as other. In the box for brief description of proposed use of materials and derivatives, type in a statement applicable to your situation. In this example, we have typed in diagnostic evaluation to compare pathogens from more recent clinical cases for their relevance or significance. In the box for describe the material to be transported, type in the appropriate description. In this instance, we have typed laboratory cultures or isolates. For the question, is the material a cell culture product? Check the appropriate response. For the facilities question, will material be sent to a laboratory with designated biosafety level? Check the appropriate response. For the use in animals question, Will animals be exposed to the transported material? Select No if correct. For the treatment of material prior to transportation section, type in the correct response. The USDA wants to know how you will dispose of the shipping package materials and will inactivate the actual diagnostic materials once you are finished using them. From the drop-down for Method of Disposition of Transported Materials and Derivatives, choose the most appropriate selection. Then, answer the question, are you planning to store the material for future use after completion of the study by clicking the correct response? In the box under the additional information, type in the accurate response. In this instance, we have typed in cultures are being stored for the purpose of diagnostic reference only. Under attachments, no document is required to be uploaded However, it is advisable to include a statement on your clinic's letterhead. For example, the statement may read, the method of disposition will be accomplished by the application of an appropriate disinfectant and enclosure in a biohazard bag. Please make sure this explanation has described your intended disposal method accurately. At the lower right, click on Save and Next. Now, review, and if necessary, Edit your draft application for accuracy and completeness. You can still edit any of the entries at this point. Once you are satisfied with all the information provided, check the box confirming the accuracy overall. Then click on Proceed to Payment. Now you should be ready to pay the processing fee for the new permit. You can see that the application processing fee is $150. Here we have clicked on Online via Pay.gov and click Confirm Payment Type. Select how you would like to pay. You can choose between a checking or a savings account, a credit card, or a debit card. Be sure to complete the payment by choosing Continue and then Pay Now at the next page. Fill in your payment account information. Then check the box authorizing the charge to the stated account. Keep in mind, if APHIS requires more detailed information, they will contact you prior to issuing the permit. 
Using the e-permit system, be sure to respond to any requests from the USDA promptly to avoid delay. What will your permit look like? Here is an example. Once you have received your new permit, be sure to read it over to fully understand the requirements. How long does it take to get a permit? It varies, but you can always check the status of your permit request on your e-permits account. For more information, get in contact with Fibro Animal Health Corporation.